Hey, thanks for stopping by. Next up on the bench, we have a cuckoo clock, and this one's definitely seen better days, so let's get right into it. Well, here's our first problem. A cuckoo has no way to open and close the door, so he's trapped inside. And this deer looks like he's taking a tumble. So we'll have to address these various um, case issues um, later on. So I'm just going to poke around in here and, and see how things are working. Uh, looks like the bellow lifting lever is catching on something, so that's not good. Uh, the bellow sounds okay, um, but the bellow on the other side has got some problems for sure. So before I start tearing this clock down, I'd like to first make a test stand so I can access the front and the back of the clock while it's running and it's got to be set up high enough for the weights to hang and, and run for a little bit. So I'll head to the wood shop and uh, get this made up. So every time I use the table saw now, I always wear this face shield. Uh, a few years back, I had a piece of oak kick back on me, hit me right in the mouth, and uh, chipped a couple of teeth. Uh, I had to get stitches in my lower lip, and my lip was numb for maybe six months or so. Uh, I think I got pretty lucky because it could have done a lot more damage than what it did, and uh, you know it could have knocked me out. Um, I could have fell forward into the table saw, which would have been bad because it was running. So uh, definitely make sure that uh, you take the proper precautions when you're working with some of these power tools because you're going to wish you had if something goes wrong. Alright, so the stand's made and uh, we can go ahead and see how it's running. So it does tick, so that's good news. But there does seem to be a problem on the chime works side of the movement. So I'll have to try to figure out what's going on there here in a little bit. So let's get the movement out of this case. First thing we got to do is get the hands off and those are held in by a, a nut and a washer. And then uh, the hands should just pop right off. And they're a little dirty but those should be easy enough to clean up. So the door on the side of this cuckoo clock is nailed shut. And I think it's because it's it's not used in this model. I think there's some clock movements where it allows the user to synchronize the cuckoo. So if the cuckoo gets out of sync with the, the hour count, um, they can open the door and uh, pull on a lever and um, get everything synced up. But this movement doesn't have that feature in it. So in order to get the movement out, these bellows seem to be in the way, so I went ahead and took them out first. And uh, this one seems to be in good condition there's no rips or tears and so let's get the other one out and see what we're looking at so these bellows are held in by a screw and a nail and uh, once you back the screw out you gotta pry the the bellow away from the inside wall and uh, they just pop right out 
there's a couple different ways you can fix a ripped bellow. Uh, you can just buy a new bellow online, uh, pop off the old bellow and glue on the new one, or you can actually repair the bellow material on the existing bellow itself. Uh, I figured it was better to keep the clock as original as I could, so I had to figure out how to uh, replace this material. Let's get into that. So I replicated the existing bellow using some scrap wood and then practiced installing the new material and uh, I think it went pretty well so I think I'm ready to give it a shot on the real one. So there's different kinds of material you can use to fix damaged bellows. It seems that most people I've used a product called Tyvek, and uh, that's what I decided to go with. Uh, some said they've used worn dollar bills, which I wasn't going to try, and some said they've used priority mail shipping envelopes. Uh, the problem with the shipping envelopes is the material's really stiff, and uh, that causes a problem with the bellow closing, and uh, the bellow closes by gravity mainly. There's a weight at the top portion of the bellow which causes the bellow to shut and if the material is too stiff it won't close and then the the bellow won't make a sound. The bellow needs to open about 1 and 5 eighths of an inch so I'm making this one 1 and 7 eighths of an inch wide and that gives me about an eighth of an inch to glue to the top and the bottom of the bellow. and I'll make this seven inches long so it can wrap all the way around the bellow. Uh, the sides are two inches long by an inch and a half, so that's seven inches total. And I'll go ahead and get the hinge cut and uh, save that for later. And then I'll go ahead and mark the center line on the top and the bottom, and this will just help me line things up here in the next step. So I decided to use tight bond wood glue and that's what I used on the practice bellow I made and it held up just fine so that's what I'm going to use here. So I thought I'd try to be clever and pre-crease the Tyvek and uh, I ended up creasing it the wrong way so that didn't help me any. I was just trying to make sure that when I did this step I creased it evenly all the way through. Next we can go ahead and get the hinge glued on and I decided to wrap a rubber band around the top and the bottom and that held them firmly together and in line with each other. Alright, look at that. It's starting to look more and more like a bellow. So, next thing we got to do is get the sides glued down. I'm also trying to make sure I spread the glue out correctly. That way there's no way for air to escape or anything like that. One nice thing is it didn't seem to take too long for the glue to dry. I had to wait maybe 10 to 15 minutes and then I was able to start working with it again. Now that uh, most things are glued up, I can start going around and removing all this extra material. Another thing I want to point out is when you're working with an X-Acto blade or a blade similar to this one, is you just don't want to lay it down on your desk when you're finished working with it because it is round 
and it'll, it'll roll right into your lap and you definitely don't want that. So those little triangle bits that are hanging off the back there are going to wrap around and uh, hold the hinge in better. So that's why it was important to make this strip 7 inches long. So the split down the side of this chamber has really been bothering me. So I went ahead and checked to see if it made a difference in how it sounded, and it did. So I'll have to get that fixed. Finally got the bellow fixed and it's sounding pretty good and we can get the movement out now. So I'm going to go ahead and get the bellow lifting wires out of the way, and these are different lengths, so I'm just going to take note of that. And there is a slight bend to these lifting wires, and uh, I'm not sure if that was done on purpose. Um, they could have had a bend in them to make sure that the height is correct between the, the bottom of the movement and where the bellows actually sit. So if there's not a problem, I'll just leave them like that. This is the strike lifting wheel and this is what the the bellow lever was catching on but it uh, looks like there's a set screw and uh, just need to rotate that probably just a little bit so it doesn't catch. So I decided to buy these special pliers I'm using here uh, just to get these e-clips off. It made the job pretty easy. You barely have to squeeze and lift up and the clips come right out.
this clip seems to be a little bit different than the other two I just removed and uh, this tool is having a hard time grabbing a hold of it because they're so thin I can't seem to get the center wheel and the first wheel on the strike side to come off so I'll have to flip the movement over and see if there's something else holding them on Oops, so I think I squeezed too hard there and that went flying across the room. But I uh, was able to find it. I heard it hit a few things and was able to track it down. So I just noticed that this cuckoo is missing an eye and I'm not sure how that happened. They're painted on and uh, I think I'll go ahead and leave it like that because it gives that cuckoo a little more character I think. So it looks like the strike gathering palette is holding the first wheel on and the half star cam is holding the center wheel on and I don't really know of a good way to get those off and uh, I didn't want to risk damaging anything so I figured I tore things down good enough to get things cleaned. Alright so now I can get everything in the ultrasonic cleaner and I think I'm gonna have to get a bigger ultrasonic cleaner at some point because uh, there's definitely not a lot of room in here and uh, I think it'd make the job a lot easier if I had a bigger one. So while that's running I'll go ahead and get everything else clean that wouldn't fit and so uh, I'll first start using uh, soapy water and then going over each pivot hole with, uh, with peg wood and then scrubbing everything and making sure I get all the, the dirt and the grime off. Looks like the water is pretty dirty so that took off quite a bit. And then I'll finish things off with the mineral spirits and that gets all the grease and oily deposits off. Alright so now I can get everything back together and oiled and uh, see how it runs. So I got a little nervous using those other pliers to put these clips back on because I didn't want them to ping across the room. So I decided to use these pliers to clip them back on and I didn't have to use much force for them to snap in. Uh, but those probably aren't the right type of tool to use for that but I wasn't sure what else to do. So there's one thing in particular I'm not addressing on this clock and that's any worn pivots or pivot holes. And that's simply because I don't have those tools yet. Uh, this is only the third clock I've worked on and I just can't go out and buy hundreds or perhaps even thousands of dollars worth of clock making gear uh, when I'm just starting out. 
but I plan on getting those tools at some point and uh, learning those skills, but I didn't do that for this clock. Now we can get the, the top plate back on and this part can take quite a while because you have to line up all the pivots with their pivot holes and uh, it can it can be quite tedious so I usually just start in a particular corner and then get that set uh, loosely put on the nut and then work my way through Man, this spring was hard to get back on. You have to put it through the hole, wrap it around the plate, and then pinch it back up on itself. On my last video there were comments made that I shouldn't have been using 3-in-1 oil to oil the pivots. So I went ahead and bought some real clock oil and uh, we'll see how this thing works. I was also uh, greasing the, the gears and the pinions with lithium grease and apparently that's a big no-no. So I stopped doing that and I'm not doing that from now on. So. I really appreciate the, the comments and the feedback that you guys leave in the comments and that just helps me uh, get better and better each time. I decided to use a paper clip for the missing hook on the cuckoo door. It already seemed to have the right bend to it, so I just have to cut that down to size and get it glued in.
So it looks like I can't tighten up this one because the screw's covered by the case. So you want to see some magic? Looks like someone's put a nail through the front of this case. Uh, I'm not sure what they were thinking, but uh, I'll go ahead and back that out. So I thought I would be able to get the cuckoo in from the inside of the case, but I had to take the cuckoo off and bring him in through the front. I just couldn't get him hooked onto the door quite right, so I made this part just a little bit more difficult because there's not a lot of room to fit my hands in there. And uh, But I was able to get it and now we can get the, the bellows back in. Alright, so now we can see how the cuckoo sounds with a fixed bellow. I think I'm starting to go a little cuckoo. So I'm going to go ahead and get this case cleaned up and I'm just going to use water and I started using a q-tip but the q-tip fibers kept catching on the wood and so I eventually changed to a small paintbrush and that seemed to to make things a lot easier. So it looks like it says Germany right there so that's pretty neat. I think I've seen some clocks where it says made in Germany but this one just said Germany. So I went over this whole clock all its nooks and crannies probably about three times just to remove all the dirt and uh, dust and everything that was on it so I just brushed it with water and then when my water got too dirty I would dump it out put fresh water back in and then go over it again until everything looks clean there's a little bit of rust on this washer so I decided to go ahead and knock a little bit of that off I wasn't trying to polish anything up here I just wanted to make it look a little bit better and I think it did the trick now it's time to do a little bit of surgery on the deer so go ahead and use some super glue and get that glued back on and I glued my fingers together I seem to always do that when I'm using super glue Alright, so we can go ahead and get the hands back on. I wasn't quite sure where to put the hour hand just yet. Uh, I first want to listen to how many times it cuckoos and then that'll let me know where the hour hand should be. Um, when you set the time on the clock, you never want to move the hour hand. You want to move the minute hand. So in order to get the 
hour hand in the right spot, I'll loosen the hour hand by pulling up on it and it's just pressure fit. And then I'll, I'll rotate it to um, the correct hour and then push it back down. So it cuckooed 10 times, not 9 times at 9 o'clock, and then 11 times at 10 o'clock, and then 12 times at 11, and 12 times again at 12 o'clock, and then the problem corrected itself. So I think I did something wrong when I was putting the movement back together, so I'll have to take it all the way back out and uh, see if I can make a small adjustment. So what I had to do was rotate the snail clockwise by one tooth. That way when the rack falls, it hits the snail in the right spot. And that seemed to fix the problem. I went ahead and also checked each hour and I didn't see that issue come up again so I think having that snail in the wrong position caused that problem. And there we go, a cuckoo clock from the 1950s, ticking and cuckooing again. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.